Would you like to learn how do you make cloudy liquids crystal clear? Well, today on WTF, we're going to show you a number of tricks to make all of your soups, stocks, and even cocktails crystal clear. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Now here on WTF, every Tuesday we talk about unique ingredients, techniques, and show you recipes and demos that you can do in your own kitchen. So remember, subscribe and ring the bell, and you'll get notified of our content that comes out every Tuesday. And today we're going to cover a really fun technique, it's called clarification. And Scott's going to tell you how do we make stocks clear and how do we make juices clear so we can make some amazing cocktails. Um, so we're really excited to share with you what ingredients and techniques and just how simple it is for you to do this in your kitchen. All right, Scott, maybe we can start off with a little bit about what is clarification and what is this technique all about? So clarification is basically pulling out any impurities from whatever liquid it is to clarify it. Uh, and there's a number of different ways to do that. Um, we obviously have a number of ingredients that will do that. We could talk about that as we get to each and every one. Okay. Um, I think why don't we start with stocks, right? Yeah. So, you know, everybody can make a stock and you put a lot of different vegetables and stuff in it and you kind of yeah. come up with a lot of um, sediment in there. What yes. do you do with that? All right. So uh, I'll talk about this right now is this is a stock that I made and I purposely did almost everything wrong on purpose to make it the cloudiest stock possible. Okay. So I boiled it the entire time rather than allowing it to simmer at a lower temperature. I've added a, a lot of, um, you know, onions that break down and, and carrots that, you know, and I made them break down fully so that it is extremely cloudy. Mm -hmm. I also, when you allow it to boil, you get all that fat mixed in. I wanted to make it the cloudiest stock possible so that I could do these three different experiments to show you how clear you can get it with these ingredients. Okay. The first, yeah, I'm going to take uh, gelatin. In this case, I used 250 blue and beef gelatin. And I added it to the stock when it was hot, and I allowed it to solidify. So you get this really kind of gelatinous stock. Mm -hmm. Stock should be pretty gelatinous, but with a chicken stock like this, it's never going to be like a firm jelly like that unless you add a beef gelatin. Okay. Then what you do is you cut it into cubes and you freeze it solid, mm -hmm. right? So I took basically just this and I froze it solid. And then when I put it into a super bag and I allow it to thaw, super bag. what happens is that the uh, the gel that is holding onto the water releases the water. Okay. Because the water will melt off, but the gel itself will not melt until about 100 degrees, like between 97 and 100 degrees. So that gel will capture all like the extra proteins and impurities, and you're left with a really crystal clear stock. This is actually the most clear stock that we have of the three here today. Okay. The next one is an agar, and you can see how firm this agar gel can get, right? Yeah, that's it's a, like a puck. Lock. Yep. So when you add the agar, this is a good way if you're making like a vegetable stock or something like mm -hmm. that, you can add agar, you don't have to add any animal products to it. Do the exact same thing. It's not freeze-thaw stable. It melts in extremely high temperature so that when I do allow this to thaw out, you can even heat it gently to pull out more moisture, mm -hmm. you're going to have the moisture in the water uh, drip off where the gel then will contain all the impurities and you okay. can see how cloudy this one is as well. Mm -hmm. The third one's really cool because you use some of the natural gelatin and you add some more gelatin to it just to kind of help it out and then you add an ingredient called kisasol. Now mm -hmm. kisasol is like a wine fighting agent and it works with two different ingredients. It works with chitosan and gelatin mm -hmm. and basically what the chitosan and gelatin do is they grab onto those impurities and when you add in the kisasol it makes them clump immediately. Right? So when you add it in, it'll start you know, clumping up all those proteins and almost coagulating them. I don't think that's the correct term, but then it drops it all out to the bottom. Okay. And you can actually see with this one, this is the sediment that's left at the bottom of the stock. And it's like this wow. really opaque, cloudy, yeah. kind of mucky uh, liquid. And then you get a nice clear stock. And this is just gently heated because there actually is some gelatin left over. Mm -hmm. So you don't lose that viscosity, which is a cool thing with this one because these will not have pretty much any gelatin in them, so they'll be really thin, whereas the kisasol will uh, allow some gelatin to stay okay. in the stock, so you get that kind of like unctuous mouthfeel. Yeah, and so that's really interesting. And all this information about how to do this, you can find that um, on our blog. It will There will be a link in the description below, so you can kind of see 
specifically which one works for yeah. you. Like Scott said, if you're trying to do you know an animal based stock, you kind of have a lot of options here. If you're doing a vegetarian uh, or vegan stock, you can certainly use the agar. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is going to be really fun and hopefully then you can go and make cool soups and stuff with your really clear stock. Now moving on to my preferred part which is cocktails. <laughs> uh, let's talk about clarifying uh, different types of juices and what we're trying to do here. Sure. So <clears throat> there's a number of different things that we did here and we'll talk about Pectinex first because we've done a few episodes on Pectinex and mm -hmm. it's really cool. So what it does is it breaks down the cell walls without having to heat the fruit so you get that really natural flavor. When you break down those cell walls they kind of expel all their liquid and it will allow them to separate out. And that's what we did with both of these cocktails. Now one of them, which is the Banana Justino, which is a cocktail that's uh, originated by Dave Arnold and mm -hmm. he, he invented this. It's a really amazing cocktail because uh, bananas are so uh, difficult to extract that that water out of mm -hmm. and a little bit of uh, amylase is an ingredient that we have uh, we actually don't have it out here uh, amylase will then break down the starches that are left in the bananas if you have really really ripe bananas you can absolutely do that generally those don't have any starch but it'll break down that so that the starches turn into sugars and then the pectinex will break down all of the uh, the cell walls and strip out all that liquid, but then you're left with uh, a really mucky, because bananas have so much in there, uh, mixture. So when this is added or it's mixed in with rum, uh, it'll help kind of you know, just drop out all of that liquid. Mm -hmm. Now there's a few different ways to then actually clarify because unless you want to like gently skim off all of that you know, muck at the top, okay. you can use a, a a spinzol here, which is a basically a tabletop centrifuge, mm -hmm. but we were able to find a way, you know, we did skim off some of the top and then we did the uh, Kisasol and Kytosan method for anything that was left in there, it will grab onto them and then drop them out and you can just pass it through a, a, a super bag just to get out any extra sediment. You can see how crystal clear this is. This is pretty much banana juice, lime mm -hmm. juice, and rum, dark mm -hmm. rum. Okay. And you can see how beautifully crystal clear it is. And I'm actually going to make a cocktail with that right now. So I have some really nice coconut milk that I got and I froze it into an ice cube. Ooh. You just put it in there and it's so simple. You can just place this directly in with that ice cube. You get a really nice cocktail. So as that coconut milk ice cube melts, mm -hmm. it will then kind of change the cocktail more and more because this does have quite a bit of rum in it. So you don't want okay. to do too much, but it's a really nice, super clean cocktail that has such a banana flavor that's not that artificial banana flavor that you always get with, uh, you know, like any types of banana rum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I can actually just smell it from yeah. here too, just the banana flavor. Yeah, so then the next one we did is actually uh, in a recipe that we came up with, which is uh, a poached pear cocktail. And this poached pear cocktail has all sorts of ingredients in it. We took all the flavors of a really nice poached pear. So we did like a white, whoop, <laughs> that top right off there. Uh, so oh, like a white poached pear. So we have some star anise in there. We have a vanilla bean and you can really see right here how cloudy this comes out, yep. right? So that's even strained out of here. And we broke it down with the pectinex. So we took some really fresh ripe um, pears and we broke them down to get all of that kind of pear essence out of them, mm -hmm. but we don't want it to be then, you know, uh, a very cloudy cocktail. We want a nice, beautiful, refined cocktail, mm -hmm. right? So what we were able to do is do a, a technique called milk washing. Mm -hmm. Now what milk washing is, is you're going to take a four to one ratio. So four parts of the cocktail and one part of milk. And this milk can be uh, cold. A lot of places say to heat it up. I find that when you heat it up, it will curdle too fast and it will not clarify perfectly. Mm -hmm. So I do cold milk, uh, one part to four parts of a cocktail. Mm -hmm. Now this cocktail must contain acid. Okay. Right? In this recipe, we use citric acid. The reason we did that is we didn't want to have to juice a bunch of lemons or limes into this. We just wanted to add in the acid so that it will naturally you know, curdle mm -hmm. the, uh, the milk. Now that doesn't sound super appealing, just curdled milk in right. a cocktail. But this is really amazing in the fact that when you add in that um, cold cocktail to the cold milk and you mix it in slowly, what it does is the proteins, we've learned a lot about that the proteins do a lot in this, uh, in the milk, the sodium caseinate will then grab onto any of those impurities, those tannins, because they're, they're uh, you know, there's all sorts of stuff that's inside that uh, cocktail that 
can make it either slightly bitter or just not necessarily as flavorful as you want it to be. And you can pull all those out as they go into the sodium caseinate and then the acid clumps them up. Okay. So when they clump up, then you pass it gently through a super bag and it really only takes about one to two strains through that super bag to be crystal clear. Now we have a cocktail here that is crystal clear. So I'm gonna put in some nice clear ice cubes we could talk about the clear ice cubes in just a moment. Mm -hmm. so, so just a few. And the clear ice cubes are nice because if you spent all this time making a clear cocktail, then you'll have a really beautiful milk washed cocktail. Wow, look how clear that is. Right? But to make it taste more like a poached pear, this has some rum, it has a little bit of uh, bourbon in it and it also has white wine, I want to add some red wine right on top. So I'm going to then float some red wine right over the top and I'm just going to use this to gently drop the red wine so it sits on top of the cocktail. And it's okay if those ice cubes stick out a little bit. They're nice and clear. Just settle it right on top. And the reason why this works is the de density of both liquids is different. Mm -hmm. So the alcohol in the, the wine and the alcohol in the bottom part of the cocktail will not you know, mix until you start stirring it up. Yeah, so we that have that. So beautiful. And then I have a bar tool. And then, oop, try not to just smash it everywhere. There we go. All right, I can stick that right in there and that will melt in and kind of sweeten it up to your liking as well. So we have this really beautiful crystal clear poached pear cocktail that Jane and can now I'll just drink. down it. Yeah, down it. Hammer it's already down 10, so why not? Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's really nice. And one thing that you, you will note is that when you have that milk washed cocktail, any of that whey that is left over will give it a really mm. rich, really smooth mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. And it almost kind of cuts out so much of the alcohol. Yeah. You know, so adding a little bit of wine on top will really bring out that wine and then you get that pear flavor and then you get all those spices and all those warm flavors. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're really proud of this cocktail. Yeah, it's super good. Like I love how complex it is. It's like sweet. It doesn't taste like alcohol, but there's certainly alcohol in here. <laughs> um, so you can definitely check out the whole video of how this is done right here on this channel in a couple of days, or you can check it out on our Instagram today. So, and of course, as always, you'll get all the recipes in the link in the description the below. But before we <laughs> sign off, we're gonna talk about how do you make really clear ice? Yeah. Because that was one of the things we were going to cover. Yes. All right, Scott, so, so yeah, this, how this did you get this ice? Bit of a, a long episode. So <laughs> the ice is really cool. Uh, and basically what it is, is you're forcing the freezing direction of the ice. Okay. So take a small cooler at home and you pour in hot boiling water into that cooler. Now what that hot boiling water does is it will maintain hot on the bottom, but all of the, uh, the cold air will be touching the top. So as it freezes downward, you'll get clear. The only time you will ever get that really kind of crystalline, uh, you know, like those white gassy bubbles is if it freezes all the way through. Mm -hmm. So as it freezes downward, then you stop it. Uh, after about 24 hours, you can then pull it out and you can take out that uh, big giant ice block. There'll be some water left at the bottom. Mm -hmm. That water is very important. That's where all those you know, extra gases are going to be. And then you allow it to uh, drain off. And one thing you need to do that's very important is you need to temper your ice. So I have some tempered ice here and you can see it is icy and cold. <laughs> uh, so it's Ooh. very clear, right? <laughs> And I'll put this back and not get water everywhere. So, it's very like clear sheet of ice. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you want to allow it to temper is that if I try to take it from a really deep frozen state mm -hmm. and I try to slice it with a, a bread knife, which is pretty much how you do it, okay. it's going to, you know, either the heat from your hand or, or just the, the tension of, you know, cutting it will shatter the whole thing. Okay. So you bring it up. Uh, until it starts to melt like that, mm -hmm. and that's when you're going to be able to cut it very easily. And if you do not do that, oh, trust me, I've tried to do it. It does not work. It just basically ex explodes. It shatters. Okay. Just like when you put an ice cube into a hot drink, it'll, it'll crack. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to do that. So it's actually very simple. It's a simple technique. If you have a cooler and you have a freezer that can contain that cooler, you can make clear ice. Yeah. So this episode is kind of fun because it shows you how to turn a variety of cloudy things clear from stocks <laughs> to different types of cocktails. 
So give it a shot. If you have any comments about our recipes, any questions, please leave them in the comments below. We do read any of them. If you're making awesome clarified cocktails, tag us on Instagram at Modernist Pantry because we like to see what you guys are doing. It's always really fun. So from here in the test kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garrett. Cheers. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell so you get notified when we drop a new video. To get today's recipes and all of our recipes, remember to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you get recipes, ask a chefs, tips and tricks, and more. And if you haven't already, tell a friend so they know what's going on here at WTF. And as always, to get any of the ingredients you saw today, you can go to modernistpantry.com to shop. And until next time, We'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences.